Uh, JT, thanks for coming on. Appreciate you taking the time to have a conversation with me. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself before we get started? Sure. So, um, hmm. okay. So I'm a former Christian uh, presuppositional and evidential apologist um, who um, basically started majoring in psychology and then later on moved into philosophy. Um, so, yeah, I have a huge interest in philosophy and uh, um, I originally started out on YouTube uh, back in 2010. Uh, I called my channel Open Air Atheist, which is no longer the channel name now. It's just my name, as you see on the screen there. Um, but yeah, I just started off as kind of an atheist debunk kind of uh, refutation bro kind of uh, uh, channel. And um, then I got really heavily into metaethics and uh, published a book on metaethics here. And uh, yeah, so my view is that um, morality begins as non-cognitive mental states and then later um, attempted uh, justifications and, uh, and belief structures are erected around those mental states. Um, and so uh, I don't agree that there are anything such as categorical imperatives. Um, I only hold to hypothetical imperatives that all odds come from if clauses, um, that morality is a power structure. It's not about uh, truth, it's about power, basically. Um, but it also has, I think, uh, anyone who's read uh, Richard Joyce uh, and the evolution of morality, uh, he points out that, you know, evolution is a, uh, or excuse me, morality is a, um, it's basically an evolved, uh, adaptation it helps us to pass on our genes um so it's a useful fiction in my view and the view of many others in that ethics but yeah cool so uh do you think that of the possible ways the world could be that there is one that is presumably better like one of the problems of non-cognitivism is the position that you can't say it's like objectively wrong to kill a baby for fun or something well wrong doesn't I'm not a strict non-cognitivist, right? Uh, I'm a hybrid theorist, so I think that there's um, that language, more language is used both cognitively and non-cognitively. But I would say that, um, yeah, I mean, if we're going to take my thesis seriously, then yeah, of course, there is no objective good or evil, right? Uh, good or evil are just mental states, right? At, at best, in my world, all we have is uh, mental states, uh, positive and negative men mental states, and uh, and instrumental goodness, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't really see that as a uh, necessarily as a flaw. I mean, it might be to some people, I'm sure. For those people who need some kind of external authority dictating to them what good and bad is, right, in a moral sense, then yeah, I guess if you um, can't understand these more complex um the complex nature of morality then yeah i guess uh there are a lot of people who will need some kind of belief structure to uh to keep them in line i don't know some of these theists they say stuff oh he froze and do i know i do all kinds of stuff you know so um maybe those people do need some kind of belief structure whether it's true or false to uh to keep them from doing those kinds of things well do you think that uh different species all around the universe would develop a similar model of morality well i mean bees have a i mean depending on what we're calling morality right but um if you mean moral realism right i don't think that's possible but if if you mean by morality people just have preferences um then sure right because we have to pass on our genes it doesn't make sense to have a society where no one feels safe enough to reproduce because civilization would be unstable we wouldn't have a, a civilization so yeah there has to be a certain amount of shared values and there has to be um some structure right well i mean like um aliens would presumably come up with the same kind of math and logic one plus one equals two a equals a those kinds of things um, do you think they'd come up with the same kind of morality? Um, harming other people for fun is wrong, generally. Uh, you know, I don't know if they would 
if they would use, well, first off, they wouldn't even use our language, right? So, um, but just hypothetically here, uh, they might if they share the same values. That's the problem. If you have different values, then yeah, you can say, if I want X, I want, I ought to do Y. Like if I want a society that looks like X, then I ought to do X, Y, and Z because that is conducive to X, right? Um, so yeah, we have instrumental goods. Sure, I'm, I'm seeing how people could, but that's not morality, that's hypothetical imperatives. It's not categorical imperatives. Well, you can have morality with only hypothetical imperatives. You don't need, you don't need categories. Yeah, no, I disagree with that. Or why? Then all, then all you have is, then all you have is, uh, you ought to do whatever you want to do. See Kane, uh, Kane B's, uh, Dr. Kane B in his recent discussion with, um, uh, rationality rules on this, where he actually, they actually explained to him why that's not going to work. Um, he also had another philosopher there with, I can't remember her name at, at the point in time, but, uh, it's definitely a good conversation to uh, to listen to, but yeah, that's ultimately what it reduces to is then we ought to do whatever we want to do. Well, because no, because you can have a a moral object like a platonic moral object, and the platonic moral object grounds morality, and then you can have hypothetical imperatives like if you want to instantiate the moral object, you ought to do the moral things or whatever. But the morality is ultimately the moral facts are grounded in the object, the platonic object, in which case you can what have... What reason would I have to believe in this object? It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The point is that you can have a morality, an objective morality. You're saying just hypothetically, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's possible to have a moral object like a platonic moral object and then only have is hypothetical imperatives. Is it and, possible? Well, yeah, yes. There's no logical contradiction, which means it's possible. Hmm. Well, I mean, in that sense, maybe there isn't. I'd have to think about that a little more. I'd have to learn more about these platonic forms. Maybe there is a contradiction, but just for the sake of, of brevity, I'll just rant that there may be some platonic moral objects. I just don't see any reason to believe that. But yeah, I mean, I guess part of my position is pragmatism, right? Uh, because there are non-naturalists, for example, who think that there are just wrong and good ref uh, good and bad, right, refer to non-natural properties, which are unfalsifiable, sure. right? So, um, but that's a different topic, like epistemology and what we can know and ontology and what actually is are two different things. So the question is, is can you have, the question I was originally addressing is, can you have a morality with only hypothetical imperatives and no categorical imperatives? And the answer would be yes, because like, you can have morality grounded in the nature of God, or you can have morality grounded in the nature of a platonic object or grounded in some moral object. And the moral object is morality there's no oughts in it it's like this object is morality it doesn't have any yeah you don't have or... have morality you um, don't have realism without oughts well uh, yes you do like there are multiple models no. that have that yes like stanford encyclopedia of philosophy moral naturalism section five yeah no we disagree with uh moral naturalism I, I'm sure you so, do, but you, yeah. it's not really, whether you disagree doesn't matter. You can still have moral realism without. It does matter because we, what? we have, um, <laughs> we have reasons to think like that their propositions, that their arguments are, are invalid, that there's something wrong with them. And that's another, that's a whole nother, uh, subject. Sure. But, but that's, that's not the point here. Are there academically valid models that have moral moral realism that do not have categorical imperatives. Yes. Yes, there are. You can disagree with those. I mean, that's fine. I don't yeah, care. No, I, I don't agree that those exist, but I, I agree. I that don't there care are if you agree. Yeah, I don't yeah. care if you agree. That doesn't matter. If there's an academically valid position held in valid esteem. In academia, what do you mean? I don't care if it's held in valid esteem. I care whether it's actually putting forth arguments that are cogent, right? I don't, I don't care about who what, holds them in esteem. What? What, so, so like if the academic literature, if, if the professional philosophers say this is perfectly legitimate form and you it doesn't disagree, matter what they say, it doesn't matter what they say. Uh, Legitimacy is not a, something that we all just come up. You with. are not qualified to interpret the arguments. They are, they say it's perfectly valid. Your interpretation means y nothing. Yes, I am. But it's, it's actually what I do. Okay. Yes. Okay. Meta ethics is what I do. Okay. Yes. So, but you don't get to invalidate an entire field of philosophy because you disagree. It's not how it works. Not just because I disagree, but I get to lay out arguments for why I disagree. And that's, then that's people fine. can decide for themselves whether those arguments stand or fall, right? Right. And they decided they fall. The people who hold that position decide they fall. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to them yet. <laughs> I've talked to a lot of different people, but I haven't talked to whoever you're referring to. Maybe I have okay. talked to them. I don't know who you're referring to exactly. But, but. but 
these exist. There are academic models, professional philosophers who have yes. models of morality that do not have categorical imperatives. These these exist. Uh, hmm. Moral naturalism, in Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Section 5. Yeah, uh, let me see what exactly you're referring to, I guess. I mean, I don't, you're just... Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, I can't go and look up this now. We're in the middle of a discussion that would take some time, but okay. um, I I don't know that that's true. But let, let's say that I'll just, for the sake of it, I'll just say there are people who define it that way. Yep. That's fine. I'd have to look at their arguments before I could say, you know, whether I agree or disagree with that, right? Yep. So that's fair. That's fair. So that's it's the Jackson realism, is that it? Jackson's moral functionalism. That's the one. It's aughts. Um, but yeah, so it's just like, I, I don't think there are categorical imperatives either. I, I think those are dumb, but I don't think those are required for morality. I think hypothetical imperatives are just fine. Um, I think you can have a moral object without any kind of aughts, and the aughts don't, aren't required for anything. We've gotten theists to admit that that's the case too. It's just God's nature is what morality so, so, is. So let me ask you this. So um, give me one of your moral arguments like uh, yeah. why you shouldn't kick babies for fun, for example, from, from I, this. I don't, why you shouldn't, I don't care if you should or shouldn't. That's just irrelevant. It is immoral to kick babies. Whether you decide you should or shouldn't just doesn't matter anymore. Why is it immoral to kick babies? It doesn't correspond to God's nature. I'm not a theist, but just hypothetically. It doesn't correspond. So why, ought, why, not, why ought I not do what corresponds to God's nature? I don't care what you ought to do. It's, it's immoral to do it. Whether or not you choose to do it is up to you. Uh, okay, so there's no ought there is what you're saying? Because mm -hmm. no theist that I know of agrees with that argument that you're making. They actually do believe in categorical imperatives. Well, they believe that after the moral foundation of God's nature has been established, you can then say, well, God gives us these commands and therefore we ought to. But those parts are irrelevant. They say what grounds morality isn't the commands, it's God's nature. Um, and so once you have God's nature, know that this is I the understand. fact it's of morality. It's yes. modified divine command theory, like yes. William Lee Craig. I understand. Yes. I, I dealt with that in the book, right? Yeah. Yes. But what but, I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is even they don't have a moral. They can't get to um, categorical imperatives either, even though they claim. I, it. I, I, I'm agree. I'm agreeing with you. But the point here is that yeah. you don't need them. Like they can ground the morality without the imperatives. They don't need the imperatives. They See, but I don't agree with how you're defining morality. Okay. Because morality to me, to me, and to most people, meta ethics does not mean whatever I want to do. Right, and I didn't say that. But if you're arguing only from hypothetical imperatives, which means you are arguing from if clauses, that's ultimately, that's only that's, if the morality is the hypothetical imperative. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the morality is God's nature. There is a moral object, and this is morality. The facts are this is the moral object, and anything that is in correspondence with it is moral. Yeah, but nobody is, agree. Nobody, nobody. Okay, every Most every theist agrees with that. Like do pretty not much agree all of that definition. I don't. I don't care what this isn't. I'm, I'm just telling you. Most people do not agree. They they agree okay. that there I are never said they did. properties that there are true moral propositions. That's part of what it means to be a moralist is that you believe there are true moral propositions. Yeah, and and you can do that without. So the give me an example of a true moral proposition. Um, killing babies does not correspond to God's nature. That's not a true moral proposition. That's a description. That's fine. That's all you need. Like if, if there's a fact no. of the matter that X is moral or X no. is immoral, you can just describe it and you have no, a moral I'm sorry. Thought. You just don't understand this subject. I, I don't mean that as an insult. You just don't. Sorry, but I do that. understand the subject. Like No, you, you don't. You're, yes, I do. Like No. Like you have a preconceived notion of what you think morality is. It's not the only no, one. It's I, not proven to be correct. It it's what's been, well, I don't, I don't care if you made it up. It's not the only time. one. Like you're begging the question, assuming your definition, which you're, is just You're wrong. just trying to pull a Sam Harris where you're trying what? to change the definition of morality. I get it. But yeah, he's been criticized. I don't until, care like, about Sam Harris. Until, until I oblivion. I don't argue the for well-being. Yeah, well, your definition's wrong. Mine's right. There you go. Done. Well, definitions can't be wrong or right. Oh, so so that means that yours isn't right and mine isn't right. They're unequal footing. I didn't say oh, it was there right. You go. I, 
not accepted by i didn't say it's I, right uh, so I, just, I don't hold to that definition well i proved you wrong because here here is a very pre predominant theory of morality god's nature it is bound by a fact of the matter it is his nature the oughts don't matter they can exist perfectly fine in god's nature without any kind of oughts it makes perfect sense like oughts are completely irrelevant it's very easy to understand most people understand yeah they it. don't they don't agree even the people that agree that hold to that <sighs> i've literally that spoken theory. to the professors on this do of, believe, that they do they do no they, they believe yes. in something more than hypothetical imperatives that's irrelevant to the question what i'm saying please pay attention so what i said was can morality exist without categorical imperatives the answer is yes no i agree they don't think they not do. moral realism they think, no yes yes that's exactly what they they mm. agree to can moral realism exist exist without categorical imperatives yes it's oh. grounded in god's nature and then he gives us commands and we get the categorical comparisons. But that part's irrelevant. Even if he didn't, you still have no. moral realism. Because no. the moral facts of what corresponds to God's nature exist independent of whether or not you ought to do them. I understand the, the definition that you hold, but I disagree. I don't uh, hold to that definition. Well, I, I'm not a theist. I don't hold to this definition either. The point is, is that it's a very common model that is agreed upon universally by millions of people. Like I don't know. Most I, most theists do not agree with that definition. Of, they of do. Moral. They literally do. Like every theist no, I've talked don't. to has agreed with me name, on this. You want it? Dr. James White? Sure. Doesn't sure. agree with that. Uh, Matt Slick doesn't agree with that. William Lane Craig. Matt Slick. I've talked to that. Matt Slick. He does agree with that. He, he will no, agree he with doesn't. this. Yes, he, he does. doesn't agree with that. I, no, I can literally ask no. him. I is morality to I've had dinner with no. him and his oh, wife, by the way. I, oh I know my God, this is very, very simple. I've asked them this exact question. Can morality exist in God's nature? Is it grounded in God's nature, independent of what you ought to do? They're like, yes, yes, it can. It's very easy. It doesn't matter what you ought to do. The truth that this fact is immoral is because I think it you're misunderstanding his argument. He's oh not my saying God. that. I'm so I'm done with that. Good night. I'm I'm, I'm going to.